whether he would abide by the results of the election. There's a word for that. It's called sore loser. But it, but it, it is also kind of not a laughing matter. I, I was a missionary in Honduras 35 years ago in 1988. And when I was there, when I was there, when I was there, si se puede, si se puede. When, when I was in Honduras, it was a military dictatorship and nobody could vote for anything. And the people that I knew prayed for the day when there would be elections and the results would be respected and there would be a peaceful transfer of power. I had never lived in a society like that before. I took voting for granted. Of course, you're going to respect an election and have a transfer of power. That's what we do in this country. But it turns out it's not so common. It's, it's kind of rare in some countries in the world. People have never experienced it. They don't know what that's like. It's one of the central pillars of American democracy. So when Donald Trump decides to attack that, you know, what I thought when I heard him say it was this. Here's a guy who's run a divisive campaign from the very beginning. He ran his first, in his first campaign speech, he said Mexican immigrants were rapists and criminals. He's attacked women, he's attacked Muslims, he's attacked LGBT Americans, he's attacked African Americans, he's ridiculed a disabled reporter, he attacked John um. McCain. John McCain said you can't be a hero because you were a POW, that you, you can only be a hero if they don't capture you. He, he, went, wow. after, he went after a Virginia family, the Khan family, who have a, who are a gold star family. They lost their son, who was trying to save other people's lives in Iraq, and Donald Trump went after them. And it was like he got to the end of the campaign, and he had insulted every group that he could. What was left to insult? A president who won't defend our democratic institutions and traditions, well, it, that person is not worthy. That's a, not worthy to be president. And that was a powerful moment the other night. Yeah! Um, but Donald's gotten the same briefings I have about the Russian effort to influence the outcome of the election. But again and again, when that came up, he kept saying, we have no knowledge that it's Russia. It could be anybody. One debate said it could be a 400-pound kid in a basement. Then the other night he said it could be China. We have no evidence that it's Russia. He wouldn't acknowledge what our own intelligence officials are telling him. So put those two facts together. He won't defend American democratic traditions. He won't condemn a foreign nation that's trying to influence and destabilize an American election. There's something very, very weird about that. It's a sore loser thing. If you know you're losing and you think you're going to lose, then you've got to have an excuse because, Lord forbid, you could never take responsibility for it yourself. I mean, you know that the day after the election, if Donald Trump loses, he's not going to say, maybe I shouldn't have run the most divisive campaign in modern history. Huh, there's a lesson for next time. I, I don't think he's going to do any soul searching and reach any conclusions or take any responsibility, so it's got to be somebody else's fault. And that's the pattern that he has. Hillary taped him on it the other night uh, because when he... When The Apprentice one year was up for an Emmy and lost. He said, the whole thing is rigged. Poor Donald Trump, the billionaire that the world has decided to rig it all against him. It's always got to be somebody else's fault. The country is stepping forward and saying, hold on a second. We know how to run elections. Most states have Republican secretaries of the electoral board or secretaries of state that run elections. They're coming out saying this election is going to be fair. But if you needed just one more reason to turn out and vote, in addition to the differences between the candidates, let's take all this claim about rigging and sore loser stuff, and let's turn out in record numbers and send the biggest, clearest message that we can. Let me tell you why, why Hillary and I are in this race. Sometimes those of us in politics, I think we make it about the policy positions. Policy is important. You know, the position on climate change, position on college affordability, position on student loan debt, position on LGBT equality, these are all very important. But I think it's also important to share why we do it. It's not just a laundry list of 10 or 15 things. Why do we do it? Let me tell you what Hillary said to me when she called me 
three week, three months ago last night at 7.32 p.m. to ask me if I would be there or something. Not, not that it was a memorable phone call for me. You know, not that it was an unusual event in my life. Hillary said this. She said, look, you've been a city councilman and a mayor and a lieutenant governor, governor and senator, and you were a missionary, and you were a civil rights lawyer. You've had a lot of life experiences. Um, but here's what she said that really tells you about her. She said, I want our administration, if we're successful, to be measured not by a bill, not by a headline, not by a soundbite, but by whether a family can better afford to send their kid to college, or whether a schoolroom is a better learning environment for a teacher or a child, or whether a small business can hire a few more people, or a worker can get a few more skills, or a family can afford health care. I want it to be measured by the practical difference we can make in somebody's life, and economy in a way that really works for everybody. We can't have an economy that's just working for people at the top. And even if the GDP is growing, if a whole lot of people don't see any of that growth as something that they can access, well, you know, it's, it's not working. It, it's got to be an economy that works for everybody. Let me, let me give President Obama his props, but let me tell you what he would say if he were here. President Obama came out of the worst recession since the 1930s, and with no help from the GOP in Congress, we have added 15 million private sector jobs. We've cut the unemployment rate in half. in 2015, we had the biggest jump ever of people moving from poverty up into the middle class. The biggest jump in any single year ever. So, President Obama hasn't had enough credit for that, but it's important, hard work is important, hard work is important. We have a policy where you do work hard, and you're under the poverty level. It means that the words that we say, we don't really mean them. If work is important, and if we value it, we ought to have policies that make sure that work is dignified and you can earn a living wage to support a family if you're working full time. So, yeah. 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 And then the fourth thing that we want to do is really focus on small businesses and startups. Gainesville's a good community for this. Richmond's a good community for this. Sixty-five percent of new jobs in this country come from startup and small businesses. And so if we have to have policies that are really focused on jobs, let's make it easier to start a small business, to get the capital to grow a small business, to hire employees into a small business, to buy health insurance for your employees if you're running a small business. And this is what Hillary and I are going to do. I'm very worried about it. Um, Florida and Virginia have some similarities because we're both seeing the effects of sea level rise. The uh, Hampton Roads area in Virginia Beach, Norfolk, Chesapeake, Suffolk, um, Virginia Beach area. Yeah. You can't solve the problem, you can't live the problem if you're refusing to acknowledge you have a problem. That's the problem with the other guy. So on this one, and I think especially with millennials, I have three 20-somethings. I've got an infantry commander in the Marine Corps and two artists. Um, they, especially, they, they all care deeply about this, but especially my artists who don't care about any other issue in, in politics are like, Dad, what are you doing about climate change? And it makes sense if you're living your 20s and 30s and you're projecting forward and you're probably going to have life expectancy to 90 or 100 if you're this age right now, stewards of this beautiful and diverse planet. And Hillary and I will do that. Very, very important issue. Very important. equality first. All men are created equal. Now, we know something about them. They put equality out as the North Star, but they weren't living equal. They really couldn't even completely conceive of it because all men are created equal, right? So that, that's, that's a sentence that right in the sentence contains like this kind of cognitive dissonance. But the good news about those folks were is even they were very flawed, at least they picked the right value. I don't know that there's another nation that says that is the value. Equality is our most fair. That's who we are. That's who we are. Yeah. And um, how, how can you match these up? And so bloodshed 
Civil War rewriting the Constitution to make ourselves a little more like who we promised we would be. And then 50 years later, this is who we said we were going to do. Women can't even have the right to vote. I mean, how can we? So then we changed the Constitution before it gets to the mid-60s. This is who we said we would be, but there's all kinds of rules to keep minorities from voting or housing or employment. So we got to pass civil rights acts to make sure that people are equal so we can live more like we said we would. Ah. Like we said we would. Yeah. Your generation, it's, it's in your generation that helped the nation wake up and say, hey, this is who we said we would be when LGBT folks are not being treated equally. Challenges, criminal justice reform, so important in our city, so important in our city. Why are we over compared to other nations, and why are the stats of our incarceration so skewed against minorities? There's an equality issue that we have to tackle. We gotta make sure we gotta make sure we keep moving forward on LGBT equality. Donald Trump and Mike Pence, they want to put Supreme Court justices in who will go backwards in Honduras. We used to say, I, don't know, I'm I want to go forward. I do not want to go back. We yeah. 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 And, basic, basic rights for women, right? I mean, shouldn't women get equal pay for equal work? We sell as well. African-Americans from voting in the 15th Amendment just because of the color of their skin, although we put up all kinds of other barriers. Then we let women vote. Then we let 18-year-olds vote. We switched the yeah. from 21 to 18 uh, under the Nixon administration. We've been expanding the opportunity for people to vote. But in recent years, really, it's kind of been in the age of Obama for some reason. In states all around this country, there have been these efforts to now kind of narrow it down. You gotta have more IDs. We're gonna reduce the number of days you can early vote. No, we believe deeply, Hillary and I, that a society that participates at the max is truly what a democracy is. We wanna make voter registration all the more. I said I'd talk about college, and the mayor talked about it a little bit too. The cost of college is, is putting it out of the reach of so many people. I, I went to college just at the right time. I went to the University of Missouri, uh, a fellow, yeah. a member of the amazing SEC. Yeah. I, I went just at the right time. What was happening with college is the cost of college was going up just about the same as wages were going up. Until about 1985. I got out of law school in 1983. I finished just in time. Then about 85, it just started to go like this. Wages were going up like this, but the cost of college was going up like that. And so many families find it really hard to afford college, and now student loan debt is bigger than credit card debt in this country. Wow. Hillary and I have a pretty simple point of view. You should not have to mortgage your future to have a future. Yeah! You 